Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to analyze five Canadian REITs which are popular in Canadian investment communities in detail and help you to invest your money in the best Canadian REITs for monthly passive income in the long term. These REITs are Granite REIT, RioCan, Cap REIT, Kilam, and Northwest Healthcare REIT. Let me know if you like this format of video and if you want me to continue to analyze other Canadian REITs in the next videos in detail. If you want to know what is a REIT, their basics, advantages and disadvantages of investing in REITs compared to owning a physical property and to understand how to evaluate a REIT, you can watch my previous video on Real Estate Investment Trust here. In this video, I'm going to apply my six REIT indicators to these five Canadian REITs and compare the valuations and quality of these stocks so you can make your investment decisions easier. These six indicators are especially appropriate for analyzing real estate companies. Using conventional matrix like PE ratio is not a good indicator in REITs, and instead I personally use these six indicators. I will first study the funds from operation or FFO of a REIT. This is this show you the cash flow of the real estate company and how much rent the REIT is collecting per month. So to evaluate a REIT, you should not only look at the growing FFO, but you should also look at the price to FFO and compare it to the five-year average and also the sector average. Second, I will compare the net asset value or NAV of each of these REITs to their market cap. Net asset value is basically the total assets of the company minus the total liabilities. If the, uh, the net asset value is larger than market cap, then REITs is at a good valuation and it is not in a major risk of bankruptcy. FFO and NAV are, in my opinion, the best value matrix indicators for REITs. Next, I will look at quality metrics and first, I look at the share dilution rate of these REITs. Most of the REITs use share dilution to raise capital and fund to acquire more properties and generate more cash flow. But if the rate that they dilute you as a shareholder is faster than the rate that they increase their FFO, then it is not a good investment, it is not a good REIT, and you are actually losing money by investing in such a company. As such, I usually compare share dilution rate to their FFO growth via FFO to share growth ratio. I will then look at their depth to asset ratio and also their average knee interest rates to understand the liabilities of the REIT and the risk of investing in the company. Next, I look at the distribution or dividend history to see how management of a REIT is returning value to the shareholder or unit holders. And finally, I will look at the payout ratio, which is basically distribution per share divided by FFO per share ratio. You don't want to invest in a REIT with, with extremely high payout ratios as it makes the distribution risky. For example, with any minor issue with their tenants, they cannot pay out the distribution anymore as the money they distribute to unit holder will be lower than the rents they collected in a month. At the end, I will also use my personal discounted future FFO model to estimate the fair value of each REIT for the 10% return year over year in the next 10 years. Now, Let's apply these six indicators and also my personal discounted future FFO model to five Canadian REITs which are popular between Canadian investors. The first real estate investment trust in my list is Granite Industrial REIT, which I talk about this REIT a lot on this channel as I personally own this stock. I have a detailed stock analysis video on Granite, which I leave a link to that video in the description box below. Granite gives you exposure to properties in the areas of logistics and industrial warehouses in North America and Europe. They have already a diversified portfolio of various industrial and logistical properties in six countries around the world, including Canada, US, Netherlands, Germany, Austria, and Czech Republic. The largest tenant of Granite is Magna, followed by Amazon. And we can also see a stable and large businesses like Walmart around their tenants. The company HQ is located at Ontario and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 71.5 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly dividend or distribution with a starting yield of 4.33% and the market capitalization of the company is around 4.6 billion Canadian dollar. Their first indicator is FFO or funds from operation. Granite consistently grew its FFO every year, and in the last five years, their FFO grew by 16.8% year-over-year, which is absolutely great growth rate for a REIT. 
Their price to FFO is currently close to 18.5, while their five-year average price to FFO is close to 22, and their sector average is 19.7. So their current price to FFO is lower than its five-year average and sector average, and therefore it seems Granite right now has a good valuation in terms of the FFO. Now, to the second indicator. Granite Reit has a net asset value or NAV of approximately 5.3 billion, billion Canadian dollar and its market cap is close to 4.68 billion, which means it is undervalued in terms of the second indicator as well. Now, to this third indicator, which is share dilution rate. Granite consistently dilutes share unit holders, but what is important is the ratio between cash flow generation and share dilution, which can be found via FFO per share. And it seems Granite was able to grow its FFO per share by 6.8% in the last five years, which means while they're diluting the shareholders, the rate of increasing the cash flow was much faster than the share dilution. The next indicator was depth to asset ratio, which is only 28% for Granite, and it is a very healthy amount for a REIT. I, I don't have any concerns about the depth of Granite. The next indicator is their distribution history and Granite has a long history of paying out and increasing its distribution year over year. In the last five years, for example, they increased their distribution by an average of around 4% year over year, which is great. Last indicator is payout ratio and for Granite, it is 79.8%, which is very good. It means they can use almost 20% of their cash flow to reinvest in themselves and acquire new properties and continue to grow in the future. Finally, let's quickly look at my personal discounted future FFO model. According to my model, if you expect 10% return year over year in the next 10 years, the fair value of Granite stock is around $91, which means compared to the current share price of $72, the Granite shares are traded at 26% discount. As you can see here, Granite has passed all the six indicators that I defined before, and it was undervalued according to the discounted future FFO model. It's a high quality REIT with low amount of risk and huge potential growth in the future, and that's why I continue to invest in Granite. The next company in my list is Ryokan. Ryokan is one of the Canada's largest real estate investment trusts that owns, manages, and develops retail-focused and mixed-use properties. They own over 200 properties, focus on six major markets in Canada, mostly in prime locations in downtown areas of big cities in Canada like Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver, where we have dense populations and relatively higher household incomes. 90% of their properties are retail, and around 8% are office buildings, and only 2% are residential rental units, with almost 97% occupancy rate at the moment, which is not bad considering we just came from a pandemic and lockdowns. The company HQ is located at Toronto and their shares are traded at TSX for almost 19.68 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly distribution with a starting yield of 5.18% and the market cap of the company is around 6 billion Canadian dollar. The first indicator is FFO or funds from operation. In the last five years, Ryokan funds from operation actually shrinked by 1.4% year over year, which is definitely not a good sign. It means they couldn't really grow their funds from operation compared to the flat to, uh, to five years ago. Uh, actually, they were able to increase these funds from operation in the, in the last two years, but overall not that much movement from five years ago. They plan to grow their FFO over the next few years by around 5 to 7% year over year, which can be great growth rate. Their price to FFO of the company is currently close to 11.2, while their five-year average price to FFO is close to 12.5, and their sector average is 13.3. It seems Ryokan right now has a relatively good valuation in terms of their FFO. The second indicator, Ryokan has a net asset value of approximately 7.9 billion Canadian dollar, and its market cap is close to 6 billion, which means it is undervalued in terms of the second indicator. Now, the third indicator, which is share dilution rate. Ryokan is one of the few REITs that does not cons consistently dilute unit holders, which is great. Here, I also look at the uh, FFO per share growth rate, and it seems Ryokan was not really able to grow its FFO per share by, in the last five years by much, so it was pretty much flat. So overall, while they don't dilute unit holders as much, the growth rate of, of, the, of their FFO was not satisfactory in the last few years. The next indicator is their depth to asset ratio, which is 44.7% with an average interest rate of 3.22%, which is, I would say, not, a, not so great, but not so bad either. 
It is, I would say, a normal amount of depth for a read, but nothing amazing in terms of the balance sheet here. Next indicator is their distribution history, and again, it's not that great. They cut their distribution during COVID and started to increase it again last year. So not a great distribution history by Ryokan management here. Last indicator was is basically payout ratio, and for Ryokan, it is only 58%, which is very, very good. It means they can uh, use almost 40% of their cash flow to reinvest in themselves and acquire new properties and continue to grow in the future. And that's why they don't need to dilute unit holders to grow. And I really like this aspect of Ryokan. Finally, let's quickly look at my personal discounted future FFO model. According to my model, if we expect 10% return year over year in the next 10 years, the fair value of Ryukan stock is around $23.3, which means compared to the current share price of 19.6, the Ryukan shares are traded at around 18% discount. As you can see here, Ryukan passed 4 out of 6 indicators that I defined before, and it was undervalued according to discounted future FFO model. Canadian Apartment Properties Real Estate Investment Trust or CapRate is one of the Canada's largest real estate investment trusts which is mostly focused on residential properties. CapRate owns approximately 67,000 suites including condo apartments, townhouses and manufactured housing sites in Canada and in Europe, mostly Netherlands and Ireland. In Canada, most of their suites are located in Ontario. According to the last presentation, 44% of their units are in Ontario, which is a big chunk of their business. Other than that, they have a nice geographical diversity in across various provinces in Canada from East Coast, I mean Nova Scotia and PEI to West Coast, BC and Alberta. The company HQ is located at Toronto and the shares are traded on TSX for almost 41.9 uh, Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly dividend or distribution with a starting yield of 3.46% and the market capitalization of the company is around 7.3 billion Canadian dollar. The first indicator is FFO or funds from operation. In the last five years, CapRate FFO increased by 9.1% year over year. The price to FFO is currently close to 18.1, while their five year average price to FFO is close to 22.5, and their sector average is 18.8. .8. It seems CapRate right now has a relatively good valuation in terms of their FFO. Now, to the second indicator. CapRate has a net asset value of approximately 10.3 billion Canadian dollar and its market cap is close to 7.3 billion, which means it is extremely undervalued in terms of the second indi indicator. Now to the third indicator, which is share dilution rate. CapRate consistently dilutes unit holders, but what is important is the ratio between cash flow generation and share dilution, which can be found via FFO per share ratio. And uh, it seems CapRate was able to grow its FFO per share by 3.7% in the last five years, which means that while they're diluting shareholders, the rate of increasing the cash flow was faster than dilution. The next indicator was their debt to asset ratio, which is 38.9%, with an average interest rate of 2.6%, which is, I would say, not the best balance sheet in the world, but it is totally normal amount of debt for a REIT. The next indicator is their distribution history. CapRate increased its distribution consistently over the last few years. In the last five years, they increased their monthly distribution by around 3% year over year, which is a good growth number. Last indicator is payout ratio, and for CapRate, it is only 62.6%, which is very, very good. It means they can use almost 38% of their cash flow to reinvest in themselves and acquire new properties and continue to grow in the future. Finally, let's quickly look at my personal discounted future FFO model. According to my model, if we expect a 10% return year over year in the next 10 years, the fair value of capital stock is around $40, which means compared to current share price of uh, almost 41.9, the capital shares are traded close to its fair value. As you can see here, capital passed 6 out of 6 indicators that I defined before, but it was fairly valued according to the discounted future FFO model. The next company in my list is Kilam Apartment REIT, which is another residential focused Canadian REIT, which I personally own in my stocks portfolio. Kilam is the largest real estate investment trust in the Atlantic region of Canada. They own and manage multiple properties in Nova Scotia, PEI, Newfoundland, and New Brunswick. And they have a large exposure to real estate market in this area of the country, where the price of real estate and land exponentially increased in the last three years. Kilam owns over 18,000 suites, including condo apartments and townhouses, manufactured housing sites, commercial properties, and seasonal resorts. 
The company HQ is located at Halifax, Nova Scotia, and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 15.8 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly dividend or distribution with a starting yield of 4.43%, and the market cap of the company is around 1.8 billion Canadian dollar. The first indicator is FFO. In the last five years, Kilam FFO or funds from operation increased by 13% year over year. Their price to FFO is currently close to 17.2, while their five year average price to FFO is close to 21.7, and their sector average is 18.8. It seems Kilam right now has a relatively good valuation in terms of their FFO. Now, to the second indicator, Kilom has a net asset value or NAV of approximately 2.1 billion Canadian dollar, while its market cap is close to 1.8 billion, which means it is undervalued in terms of the second indicator. Now, the third indicator was share dilution rate. Kilom dilutes unit holders, but what is important is the ratio between cash flow generation and share dilution, which can be found via FFO per share ratio. And it seems uh, Kilom was able to grow its FFO per share by 4.9% in the last five years, which means they diluting the, while they're diluting the shareholders, the rate of increasing the cash flow was significantly faster than share dilution. The next indicator is their debt to asset ratio, which is 44.3% with an average interest rate of 2.63%, which is, I would say, not the best balance sheet in the world, but it is totally normal amount of debt for a REIT. The next indicator is their distribution history. Kilam increased its distribution consistently over the last few years. In the last five years, they increased their monthly distribution by around 3% year over year, which is a good growth number. Last indicator is payout ratio, and for Kilam, it is around 75%, which is good. It means they can use almost 25% of their cash flow to reinvest in themselves and acquire new properties and continue to grow in the future. Finally, let's quickly look at my personal discounted future FFO model. According to my model, if we expect 10% return year over year, in the next 10 years, the fair value of Kilam stock is around $19, which means compared to current share price of 15.8, the Kilam shares are traded at 20% discount. As you can see here, Kilam passed 6 out of 6 REIT indicators that I defined before, and it is undervalued according to the discounted future FFO model. And that's why I continue to buy Kilom shares at this price. The last company that I want to analyze its stock today is Northwest Healthcare REIT, which owns a portfolio of high quality international healthcare real estate infrastructure comprised of diversified portfolio of almost 190 income producing medical office buildings, clinics, and hospitals located in Canada, Brazil, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. The company HQ is located at Toronto and the shares are traded on TSX for almost 10.8 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly distribution with a starting yield of 7.37% and the market cap of the company is around 2.6 billion Canadian dollar. The first indicator is FFO or funds from operation. In the last five years, Northwest FFO increased by 6.4% year over year. The price to FFO is currently close to 12.9, while their five-year average price to FFO is close to 16.7, and their sector average is 12.9. Now, to the second indicator. Northwest has a net asset value or NAV of approximately 2.3 billion, and its market cap is close to 2.6 billion, which means, unfortunately, it is slightly overvalued in terms of the second indicator. Now, the third indicator, which is shared dilution rate. Northwest consistently dilutes unit holders, but what is important is the ratio between cash flow generation and dilution, which can be found via FFO per share ratio. And it seems Northwest was able to grow its FFO per share by 3.4% in the last five years, which means while they diluting unit holders, the rate of increasing cash flow was slightly faster than share dilution. The next indicator is their debt to asset ratio, which is 46.2% with an average interest rate of 3.77%, which is, I would say, is not really great. It's not extremely bad, but I don't really consider this to be a great debt load, particularly with a relatively high average interest rate. The next indicator is their distribution history. Northwest Healthcare Properties did not increase its dividend by much in the last few years, and the five-year average Dividend growth of Northwest is close to 0%, which I don't like this at all. Last indicator was payout ratio, and for Northwest, it is close to 95.7%, which is absolutely not good. It means they almost pay all of their rent, all of their 
funds from operation income to unit holders as distribution and don't have much cash available to reinvest in themselves and grow in the future. Finally, let's quickly look at my personal discounted future FFO model. According to my model, if we expect 10% return year over year in the next 10 years, the fair value of Northwest stock is around $6, which means compared to current share price of almost $10.8, the Northwest shares are traded at 44% premium. As you can see here, Northwest passed only two out of six REIT indicators that I defined before, and it is significantly overvalued according to the discounted future FFO model. There you are guys, this was my detailed analysis of five Canadian REITs which are popular between Canadian investors. If you want to see the second episode of this series, drop a comment and let me know which REIT you want me to, you want to see next. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button so this video can reach a wider audience. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Farewell.